I'm here in Gothenburg at the Perfect World Foundation's Climate Conference and Polar Bear Ball. There's a whole host of conservationists and philanthropists all joining together today to find out how we can act to fight against climate change. Oh, and just the conservation superhero David Attenborough is here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, the Foundation. What in first inspired you? Me and my wife was uh, traveling in Thailand and we met with uh, a, a lady. She was uh, uh, taking care of uh, stray dogs and when I met her and realized how dedicated she was doing this 100% for the, for the dogs. Yes. I remember I gave her a small amount of money because I wanted to support her whatever I had in my pockets and when I saw her tears coming out of her eyes I said that I have been working with the wrong things for the whole of my life. So we said that we need to help these people and fundraise and give them money so they can keep on working with uh, whatever they do in the field. It's with that ethos that Lars and his wife Rags based this whole foundation on. And for this event, they've invited entrepreneurs and experts from all around the world to shine a light on global climate issues. My name is Tegan Yardley. I'm a 15-year-old wildlife activist from the United States. This young lady really hit my heart because I have two daughters. Mm -hmm. They're six and four. And, and I feel now as, as a mother, you know, a, a big responsibility to go home and try to take these lessons, you know, and try to teach them a little bit. There was a huge focus on young people and how they could influence climate change. One person who's championed this all his life is Sir David Attenborough, and I couldn't wait to hear what he had to say. I won't be foolish enough to try and tell you people, this audience, the dangers that the world is facing at the moment. You know very well what they are. We are totally dependent upon the natural world. It is in the greatest possible danger than it has ever been in the history of mankind. We are causing those dangers, but we can deal with them. So I thank you for inviting me here, and I congratulate you, this Perfect World Foundation, for everything you are doing. May your message spread far and wide. Thank you. literally can't believe I was just in the same room as David Attenborough. That man can hold an audience. He had no visual cues, no films. We were all just captured in what he was saying. David Attenborough in Sweden, in Gothenburg, in the Botanical Garden is absolutely fantastic. Today we're going to plant a very unique tree. So we have waiting for this moment, not only to have Sir David here, but also to plant this tree. there. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a great privilege. For anyone that don't realize why we are planting this tree, it's because it's included in a campaign for the Perfect World Foundation to plant a million trees to reduce CO2 emissions. The honey from the garden. It's yours. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> so guys, are you happy now? Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> We've had a quick outfit change and we're now here at the Polar Bear Ball. We had the climate conference earlier where lots of big ideas were discussed and now we're hoping to raise some money in order to action some of those projects. So Rags, huge congratulations about the Polar Bear Ball. Everyone's looking lovely, the set looks fantastic. Could you just speak a bit about what's important tonight and who you're awarding tonight? Yeah, um, we are session? awarding Sir David Attenborough. <laughs> and of course he's like a legend for all of us. So we are so happy that he's in Gothenburg. And he gets the award because we want to give the award to someone that, that really reached a lot of people. Before the dinner and the award ceremony, I managed to catch up with some of the speakers from the day's event, including Nobel Prize winner Dr. Pachuri, who told me about one of his most important programs. We have launched something called the POP movement, Protect Our Planet, which is focusing on the youth of the world. And they have to start in their schools, colleges and universities and make these models of sustainable development. If you look at every major revolution in this world, 
it has been driven by the youth and the involvement of the youth. You're an absolute inspiration. Your speech today was phenomenal Thank and you addressed you. the UN at the age of 13. Thank you. If other young people would like to get involved in conservation, how can they follow suit? I think that they can educate they can educate themselves and educate others. Young people's voices are so important in this day and age. People will listen if you if young people speak up. What initially got you interested in wildlife and charitable foundations? Well, I've been running my charity since 2001 as a dog and cat rescue. And then as I started to transition, I just knew I wanted to help more animals in a much bigger way. And I didn't know what that was like yet until I was paying attention to social media. And I realized there was a poaching crisis and there were animals that were now endangered and at risk of losing them in our lifetime. So it was, it was actually one poaching video that, that flipped a switch in me and changed everything and got me interested in going to Africa and therefore moving to Africa. With social media and ecotourism playing such a big role in awareness nowadays, when I had my few minutes with Sir David Attenborough, I had to ask him his thoughts on the topic. Fantastic to have you here in Gothenburg. Thank you very much. Do you think that responsible ecotourism can be used as a positive tool well, for no conservation? question about that. Of course it can. There wouldn't be any animals in the Galapagos if it wasn't for ecotourism. Uh, the mountain gorillas of Rwanda have been saved through ecotourism. It's the almost the biggest uh, earner of foreign currency and for the state. Absolutely. Um, and why should we begrudge? people um, uh, going to see these things, uh, they're part of all humanity's inheritance. With a knowledge and mentality like that, it's no wonder this man gets standing ovations everywhere he goes. more honoured than I can say. In my lifetime, when I started making animal films in 1954, a long time ago, we thought the world was fine. We thought the seas were infinitely big. We would thought that we could kill animals if you wanted to, but there were plenty more where they came from. That is no longer so. The world is facing a major crisis. To meet Sir David Attenborough was like going into five generations of, of the history books of life. His voice, his charisma. Yeah, as I said in my speech, it's like being with Her Majesty because you're, you know, so consistent, so steadfast, and such an extraordinary iconic people. Thank you very much. The Polar Bear Ball has been a phenomenal event. We've heard about some really important issues. I've got to meet my lifelong hero. We've had fantastic entertainment and we've raised hundreds of thousands of pounds for conservation issues worldwide. Lars and Rags are just two individuals and their ambitions have created everything that's happened today. What can you do as an individual to save our planet? <laughs>